Hi everybody, Rob here from Prior Studios and welcome to this quick tip video. Now I think it's safe to say that most people want to keep their objects parametric for as long as possible and only make them into editable polygon objects when they really have to. And you know there, there's good reason for that. It's uh, nice, it's efficient, we get to keep, so let's just add a cube to the scene, we get to keep all these options down here, we can turn on if it's a cube. Um, our separate surfaces, filleting, we can adjust the filleting, we can add segments and so on and we can go back and we can undo those changes or adapt them to other needs. Now we only have a few limited options for parametric objects and they're not going to cater for all kind of possibilities, all eventualities um, and I just want to show you a quick way of being able to actually change a parametric object at the point level. So let's decide what we're going to make this. Do something kind of basic and quick because this is a quick tick after all. Now, let's say we want to make an egg. We could use maybe a cylinder or a sphere, uh, anything that might work, um, but we'd have to make it editable. If it was a cylinder, we'd need to make it editable and then we'd have to optimize the mesh because the, the top and the bottom face are separate objects. Um, so let's stick with a cube because it's kind of the most basic. Let's add a subdivision surface. I'm just going to increase that to three just to get a real nice amount of smoothing. And you can see we've now got a sphere. Now that's great, but it doesn't help us to create our egg shape. Uh, what we need to do is we would normally make it editable. We would take the bottom face. Let's just change this for to good shading lines and we'll go to isopalms. So we're actually looking at the, the edges of the actual geometry, not the subdivisions. Okay, so we would take this bottom face and we would scale that down to create our egg shape. Um, but we can't do that without making it uh, an editable object. Or can we? Well, the answer is yes. There's a little used deformer called the correction deformer, which I'm going to make a child of the cube. Uh, so we've got the cube here and you can still see it needs to be made editable, but we're not going to do that. We're going to select our correction. We're going to go into point mode and I'm just going to use my select tool to just select a few points here and I'm going to go into my scale tool and you can see now that I can take those points and I can make my egg shape you can see the underlying mesh is looking pretty good we now have an egg and if I turn this off, you can still see, and I'll turn the sub Ds off as well, you can still see that we have our parametric cube, which is perfectly cube shaped. Uh, and it is just the standard parametric cube. So if I select it, you can still see it's a cube icon. If I hit C to make this editable, you'll see that that now turns to a polygon object. Uh, and we still have the correction there, but we don't need it. Let's just undo that to make sure we go back to our primitive object. We still have our ability to fill it things. Uh, if I turn this on, you can see that's affecting the fillet as well. We can turn on smoothing. And now we have a, a, a very nice smooth cubic shape here. Uh, but it's not a cube, it's actually kind of this inverted pyramid. And making this out of an editable mesh would A, it would take a bit longer, um, and C, it would be less versatile. So this method means that your meshes stay versatile, adaptable. You have all of these options here and everything stays primitive and parametric, which is particularly useful. So I hope that's been a help. Um, just one final thing is it's not kind of stuck with um, keeping these proportions the same. You can take just a single point if you wanted to do something completely kind of organic looking and out of your, the kind of normal relationships you can. So you can grab a point, any point, and you can move it around and you can do what you need. And, and of course, being a deformer, you could add more of them. So you could add a, a second correction deformer. And let's say take that point and we'll knock that over there somewhere. Make sure it's still a child. And then you have two deformers working the same, meaning that you can really kind of go to town on a, a, a primitive mesh without any editable polygons in the scene. So I hope that's been of some use. And I'll see you all again in the next quick tip video. Thanks very much. Bye.